Hello everyone. It's been a little while because I've been a little sick. While I've been sick, I reprogrammed a lot of this code to be a lot more robust. And I'd like to talk a little bit about graphical user interfaces. Um, because I know that a lot of people are confused about how to build them. Now if you look it up online, you won't have any problem finding out how to do a raycast or how to use GUI.drawTexture. But there are a lot of problems with just trying to build it off of that kind of nitty-gritty tutorial. So I figured I'd give you a little bit of a lesson on the structure of a user interface and how a, a user interface works in general so that you'll know how to put those pieces together. My game, uh, I'm still using nothing but programmer art for my user interface, but my user interface is complete in that it fully functions. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all of the details. We're going to start by saying that there are three kinds of user interface elements but they all play the same kind of role. So no matter which method you use to visually implement your interface elements, they all have the same thing to do. And that same thing to do is to be part of the state machine, the user interface state machine. So over here on the right, I have a number of these uh, GUI objects that highlight as I walk over them. Uh, and those are actual GUI objects. I mean, those are physical game objects that, that I just, you know, that have a, a transform in everything. Now, the reason I make them physical game objects is because I want to use Mechanim to animate them. So I want to have them sweep in and sweep out. I haven't actually done that part yet, but uh, I really am looking forward to it whenever I get around to making icons that aren't drawn in paint. Um, but unfortunately these objects are not very good at interacting with your code base and unless you know how to do that they're almost useless so what I'm gonna do is oh I should mention if you don't know what a state machine is stop watching now and go look it up go learn about it because that's one of the most fundamental concepts uh, that, a, that a programmer can learn and if you don't know that you can have a lot of problems with all sorts of programming uh, just go look it up on Wikipedia uh, and then read it until you understand. No one will judge you. You don't have to tell anyone. Anyhow, um, these each control a different state. So this is the view state, this is the floor placement state, the wall placement state, uh, the, the, the uh, station placement state, and the assignment placement state. Each of them has different rules, and each of them is a different set of functions in my code. But connecting these icons to the code was kind of annoying, because what I have to do is I have to have a piece of code, and I think it's in, no, it's in the camera. Here it is. So here in my facility code, I actually have to have all of those saved as variables on my facility construction handler so that I can access them and know what they are. And then if we go over here to the facility construction handler, I do that in update, and I just manually check each button to see whether the player is mousing over it and whether they've clicked on it. Now the good news about that is that you can do that really easily just using this uh, very typical rect contains input that mouse position. You don't have to use the um, uh, ray casting because it's a 2D element so there's no ray involved. Uh, and this is way, way faster than ray casting. I could do this a bazillion times a frame and it wouldn't, wouldn't slow anyone down. Um, but it does require me to hook all of those pieces into the code. And if they're going to be in the code anyway, why not just make them out of code? Well, that's the second kind of option we have. But let me just put a little bit more uh, detail into this. This is an update. Now, there's another function called onGUI. And you might be wondering, well, why is, why is it sometimes an onGUI and why is it sometimes an update? I could actually put all of this stuff in ongui and it would work fine. But the reason I not is because uh, Mechanim will animate that stuff on frame, on frame update. It will not, that, that stuff does not update on GUI calls it updates on update. Um, and so just as a matter of course, I kind of put it in update. But this has a big downside because every mouse click event fires in on GUI and in update. So I can't catch it in one spot and stop it from happening in the other. Which would often be, I think a lot of people have fall through uh, where they click on something and then it falls through to whatever's behind it. And they're like, oh, that's so annoying. Well, you have to both catch the event and you have to make sure that you aren't um, using both update and on GUI because you'll have fall through if you are. In this case I don't have to worry about it because there are no programmatic elements that are active when this is active. 
but uh, it may not have been the wisest idea. And if I was starting over again, I might put all of this stuff in on GUI. Um, but the reason that I wanted to be able to do it here in, uh, in actual game objects would remain unchanged. It's actually quite difficult to get a good looking menu out of programmatic elements. Um, and that's, uh, that's just because you have to place everything pixel by pixel rather than dragging and dropping. Of course, uh, Unity's GUI elements are not exactly easy to put in where you want them either, um, unless you're using something like NGUI or whatever. Anyhow, programmatic elements. So all of these are programmatic elements, and so is this. That's uh, higher than I remember it being. I'm, I'm working on a much smaller screen than I'm used to, so uh, everything looks looks uh, much larger. This is not normally nearly this large. But you can see that this works fine, and I can edit all of this stuff. Well, what I'm actually doing is when I click on this, I'm adding another layer to the GUI uh, stack. So I'm saying, well, we've got this machine here that controls these five states. But right now it's been superseded by this machine here that is responsible for displaying the GUI of this one station. So this guy over here, he doesn't do jack. He, he, he's given up control because we now have a second layer that is in, in far more dominant control. So it's a state machine where I've just put another state on top and I can peel it back. And now we're back to having these guys in control. So that's really useful because you can repeat it for infinite amounts. So I can click here, new output, and now there is a third layer. And the second layer is like, okay, well now there's a third layer. I don't, I don't have to, you know, I'm not in control anymore, so I'm going to be invisible for a while. And the third layer goes, yeah, yeah, click on something, click on something. And I say, okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and add output cubicle one. And it goes, okay, I've added it. And it peels itself back and returns to the second layer. And you can see that we now have three rather than two. And these can be edited. I'm using the typical... Um, if on button, or sorry, if GUI button for these. Uh, I don't like if GUI button because if GUI button doesn't allow for right clicks, doesn't allow for dragging, doesn't allow for tooltips, but it's good for very basic stuff like this. Also, in case you're wondering, uh, this surrounding rect actually is sensitive, so whenever I move my mouse into a different surrounding rect, you can see that that uh, kind of tiger striped box is around whatever object uh, is is responsible, and uh, and that's a rather easy thing to do as well. It's the same thing that I do over here. You just use a you know mouse over uh, if, if if rect contains mouse, but you have to be careful because there's a y-axis inversion between update and on GUI, so you might find that you've got the wrong one of them goes up and one of them goes down. So you might find that your mouse cursor is not moving where you think it is, which is annoying. But hey. It's all supposed to change soon. The fairy tale of the never-ending search for GUI's new, uh, Unity's new GUI. So the third kind of menu element is the in-world 3D menu element. And that would be primarily these uh, line drawing, these line renderer um, arcs. However, it also includes these lights. So if I was going to show you, I can actually hook these lights pink and it changes to blue so these in-game objects are a lot of fun um, they can be quite difficult to wrangle just because there are a lot of them uh, and they interact with the game world so you need to be careful not to have you know things shouldn't bounce off of them or whatever primarily I don't use them for clicking I use them for displaying passive data so that the player can see what's going on in the game world. And obviously, just for display purposes, there's not a whole lot of interaction with the state machine. Although I actually do um, this, if you can see, when you freeze the, uh, when you go into assignment mode, uh, they do change color so that you can tell that you're in assignment mode. And I'm probably going to make it so that these vanish when you're, uh, you know, when you're clicking on an object, so they wouldn't show up right now. But I haven't gotten quite that far yet. Fundamentally, however, they aren't something you can click on, and um, and they don't interact with the player. They just are there to let the player see things, and those are really useful. Um, the juicier you can make your interface, and the clearer you can make your interface, the more comfortable the player is going to feel. Uh, now, getting all of these different pieces, the game object 2D textures, um, the in-world 3D objects, and the programmatic 2D objects, Getting all of those to work together requires a crap ton 
of screen point to uh, to to world uh, or, uh, screen screen point to ray and world point to screen uh, and all those annoying conversion functions. So get real used to those. Um, otherwise, you're going to really lose track of what's going on. But don't get flustered. It's all pretty basic once you understand that it's just a giant state machine, and you just need to keep your eye on the fact that you're going to be switching between states and stacking them. That's it.